Hey everyone, Jonathan here from Bravo Photographers. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Lightroom G13 gaming keyboard. And that looks just like this. Uh, there's a photo on my blog as well. Uh, this keyboard is actually really fantastic. Uh, it's meant for, for gaming, for online gaming, for computer gaming. Uh, and I was able to adapt it to use for photo editing. Uh, now we know Lightroom 2.0 is a very powerful tool, uh, however it, it is still a little bit time consuming. So what I've done is I've created a couple of scripts uh, and shortcuts to use this uh, ergonomic keyboard to help me speed through uh, editing photos of weddings. Uh, as you can see in this, uh, in this wedding we have about uh, 3100 photos. Uh, and I'm going to try and speed through that in just under, uh, I'd say, three hours. Uh, and that includes selection, light correction, color correction, and a bit of artistic editing using uh, my developed presets. Uh, I have a whole bunch of presets enabled here. All right. So I'm just going to take you quickly through uh, what, the, what the keyboard can do. Now, uh, if you can see here, there are three keys at the top, M1, M2, and M3. Uh, these allow all 22 keys, sorry, 22 plus uh, 1, 2, and joystick up, down, left, right, and in. Uh, it allows that to sort of, uh, allow you to set a different configuration for each setup. So what I've done is my first setup, uh, the blue setup, I've made that the library setting uh, and with a click of a button we can get over quickly to develop settings um, and my third setting is actually for Photoshop and we'll get into that maybe in the next one. So for now we'll, uh, we'll get back into the library setting and I'm able to quickly uh, sort of skim through these and select uh, and I use my joystick to sort of go through real quick and I'm able to uh, just quickly select or deselect which images I want to keep. Uh, so that as a keeper, this camera guy in the way, get him out of there. Uh, not so much. That's a lot better. And so quickly, I mean, you can obviously use the X key or the P key. Uh, I just find that first of all, they're they're just way too far apart, obviously, to to use it comfortably. And uh, with the key that I have set up here. Oh, it's a little bit of zoom. That's all right. We'll zoom back out. Uh, with the keys I have set up here, I can just quickly select and uh, and cancel which ones I feel fit just with these two keys here. Now, these ones here I've set for a bunch of different settings. Um, this is the, the library module settings that I have set up here. All right. And uh, the develop module settings are here. So it's completely different uh, setup as uh, using the keyboard itself and much more ergonomic so I can stay in a seated position uh, even though I'm getting through these images a lot quicker uh, I'm a lot more comfortable in doing so alright so let's just uh, quickly go through these and, and select and edit which ones we feel fit um, let's go back to this one I kinda like that alright keep that uh, not so much definitely no kinda cute Alright, so I'll just speed right through these. As you can see, sort of very fast at doing these, you know, just sort of picking through which ones we like, which ones we don't like. Nice shot, it's really nice. Um, and so as we're doing these, funny face right there. Uh, if I wanted to quickly edit these, all I need to do is just push my uh, develop tool, switch over to develop, and now with this I can do some auto adjustments. If I think that's too dark, I can scroll through. And let me show you here quickly uh, how we're going to save time in the develop module. If uh, you wanted to you know, use the exposure, normally you'd have to come up here with the mouse and sort of grab it and slide it over and, and see where it fits and then sort of let go and then I gotta go to black so I mean it, it might not seem like a lot to 
uh, move your mouse around and, and sort of grab these things, but remember, you're always moving your eyes whenever your mouse has to grab something. So you're losing about two to three seconds every time you gotta grab something, one, two, three, you go to black, you drag the one, two, three, uh, you might want to fill some light. So just to do that took me about four or five seconds. Now, if you look at four or five seconds times about a thousand or two thousand images, uh, that's like four thousand seconds at the minimum. Uh, that roughly translates into about uh, just over half an hour or an hour. Um, if you want to do this much more quickly, I've set up the keys to sort of scroll through real fast. Uh, you can see that here and it, it also displays on the screen right here uh, but you can see it scrolls through all the, the most uh, common treatments that you can do here you know we have our uh, the white balancing we have our tones okay we have our presence values as well so what i'm doing is i'm scrolling real fast uh, if i want exposure up i just click the button a couple of times it gives me an increased exposure uh, i can drop that light down i can increase it so fast without even you know, basically without even using my mouse key, uh, which saves a lot of the wrist work as well, okay? So that's a, a great function here. Uh, if I want to drop down the saturation, I can do it very quickly, also uh, using the shift key uh, on button I programmed, and just drop it right down, all right? So nice black and white image. Uh, if I want to individually select some of these uh, uh, these tones and increase the brightness or saturation, sorry, increase the uh, the curve or decrease the curve of the highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. All I'm doing right now is I'm clicking one button, okay, and that gives me, uh, sorry, that's my that's my graduated filter button. Uh, my button that, that allows me to do that is uh, quickly just click it on, on this button here. So instead of clicking this and then coming over and doing it like that, uh, this button allows me just quickly for it to be selected and I can adjust it that way and select any tone I need to increase or darken. Okay, and that's a, that's a very good feature there. All right, move back to uh, library mode or we can keep it in develop mode. The great thing is uh, I can keep the develop mode showing while moving this to the library mode. So I can still select uh, or reject photos while in develop mode uh, but if I want to move and actually start developing images I can just simply click on this it's going to move to develop mode and then I have my develop controls okay all right so just quickly adjust this looks like there's not enough uh, exposure on that might want to fill some light actually in there as well and uh, clip some of those blacks out Okay, additionally I might want to just quickly come in here and drop hair down, maybe lift the brightness right in there. Uh, and then conversely I can also scroll down here. Now I've, I've set it up so that my beginning must be controlled by the mouse. I kind of like the fact that it's a little bit more gradient than steps. Uh, you can control it a couple at a time. Um, not to mention, you know, I can still, uh, I can, I can still use uh, any of the buttons I want. If I wanted to program to for these to move up and down the same way as my exposure and, and saturation, I can do that. Okay. So now we're selecting this one, and we're going to continue on. Uh, not too powerful that image blinker. That's a little bit better. Get rid of that. There go. Got somebody else in there. Reject that. Kind of a cool shot blurry for me and we're moving in here okay so I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these but you can see just in a matter of minutes I've gone through quite a few and uh, and it's a lot easier to do all right so this is just the first part we're just doing a little bit of testing and see what you think about this video